Now, how do you get enough protein in the body on a day to day basis? Remember, just for the maintenance, do you know what we need? We need 0.8 gram of protein for every kilogram of you. That means if there is somebody who is 100 kilogram, you're going to need 80 grams of protein just for your maintenance. To give you an example, if you are a vegan, your sources are a little bit limited, but remember, they are there. Tofu, rajma, chole, big things, soya chunks are right there. You're a vegetarian. Now your palate is a little bit broader than the vegan. Now you can add proteins from the milk. Your paneer, your yogurt is right up there. You're a non-vegetarian. So along with all the vegetarian sources here, you can add eggs, fish, and chicken. I'm staying away from the red meat. Your protein source has to be heart healthy. You cannot rely on a single source of protein every day. It has to be rotated because everything your body needs comes in a tiny bits and pieces along with the big micronutrients, macronutrients rather. So remember, even if you're a vegan, one day could be rajma, other day could be a tofu, next is the soya chunk and then the chole because you want to rotate these sources of protein. You want to give that body everything that is going to require. Same thing when it comes to non-vegetarians. It cannot be a fried chicken, right? Because now you're going to add extra fat, especially the trans fat when you're going to fry that chicken, which is going to basically negate. It's basically going to get rid of all the benefits that your protein are going to get, and you're going to get all the bad effects of that frying thing. So chicken curry is fantastic. If you can broil the chicken, that is okay as well, but just don't fry. Frying is what's gonna get rid of those extra nutrients in there. So it's extremely difficult most of the time to incorporate that much of a protein in your diet to begin with, unless you're doing an extra effort. Now there are sources which are beyond the food, right? We have all heard about protein powders. The sources would be whey, then there's a brown rice, then there is a pea. So if you're a vegetarian, you also have an option of green pea protein or the brown rice protein, then whey protein. So whey protein is basically coming from the milk. It's a milk protein at the end of the day. Whey protein is a very dense protein that can fulfill those needs. Remember some of the individuals, very minority of it may be allergic to it. Unless you try, you wouldn't know which protein is going to sit there. Again, the goal is to fulfill the need, but also to rotate the sources of different proteins. You're going to try to make the big chunk of your protein requirement through your diet and whatever you're deficient in those numbers, you can fulfill it with the help of the protein supplements. Now, if you're a pre-diabetic or diabetic, right? You said, you know what? I have these powders. Now, can I take it? The first thing you should be looking at is the amount of the sugar you're going to consume with that scoop. So keep an eye on the added sugar with those proteins. The proteins are going to help but the added sugars are not going to be beneficial if you already are a pre-diabetic or a diabetic. You can get those powdered protein, you know, in a shake or try to add into your recipe. Put it in the yogurt, put it in a chapati. Whichever way you can incorporate those proteins in your diet, it's going to be so much effective for you.